Hey there, this is Atul from Team Ketone Academy and in this episode we are going to look at the certification Microsoft Azure Data Scientist Associate certification number DP100 exam topics and everything you must know if you're appearing for this exam. Now first thing is that Data Science DP100 is a level 2 associate level certification and that's applicable for anyone who is working or would like to work on artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning and anything and everything related to data scientist. Now, there's another certification which is AI 900, though it's not required or it's not a prerequisite for DP100, but having a knowledge of Azure AI fundamentals will help. And then there are other expert level certificates that are more targeted towards a solution architect or DevOps, which are three-star certifications. Now, if you'd like to know more about AI 900, which is Azure AI Fundamentals, you can refer to my other episode at ketoneacademy.com forward slash AI 911. I've covered a blog covering everything you must know about AI 900 in another episode. Now, coming back to the data scientist DP 100, the best way to learn on everything you must know about data scientist DP 100 is to go to ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP 111. So I'm on this, my blog post, ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP111. And let's look at everything that you must know about this exam. So the first thing is, what is this uh, Azure Data Scientist certification is? So this certification is aimed and targeted for those who would like to apply their knowledge of data science and machine learning to implement and run their machine learning workload on Microsoft Azure using Microsoft Azure's machine learning service. So this includes things like creating a workspace and workspace is nothing but a logical collection of your different resources that will help you in running your machine learning models. So running your data experiments and training the predictive machine learning models. Now I'm assuming you already know the benefits of learning data science. That's why you are on this. But if you further would like to know why you should learn data science, have a read these two sections. Now, what are the prerequisite for DP100 exam? So because DP100 is a data science on Microsoft Azure, having a basic fundamental knowledge of Microsoft Azure is helpful. Now, apart from that, you should have a knowledge of Python. So if you're working on data science, you should be having a knowledge of either Python or R. That's another programming language. Now, data science on Microsoft Azure is primarily uses Python. So you should be having a Python knowledge using libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. You should also have some basic familiarity of the large machine learning models. Now, if you don't have any of these knowledge and if you would still like to learn and understand, in this episode, I'm going to tell you how you can learn all these things quickly. Now, this exam consists of roughly around 40 to 60 questions. You have to score 700 out of 1000 and you have three hours for this exam. So the plenty of our time for this. Now, once you have learned this uh, data science, you've understood the concepts and you're ready for the exam, you can come here on this link and uh, apply for this exam or register for this exam. Now, the main thing is what all things you should be learning. So there are four main things you should be learning. First is setting up this machine learning workspace. So what is a machine learning workspace? Machine learning workspace is nothing but a logical collection of your resources that has compute, which is nothing but a fancy name of virtual machines, or you can have a Kubernetes or a Docker container on which your workloads run or machine learning workloads run. You have storage account in which your data is stored. You have Jupyter notebooks. You have data or data sets. You have your models being deployed. You have your experiments, your machine learning pipelines, your container registry where your images are stored, your keywords for storing the security credentials. So collection of all this together is a workspace under which you work and putting them into a resource group, which is nothing but collection of resources is a resource group in Microsoft Azure, that's Azure terminology. So you should be having familiarity of all this. Now, once you understand the machine learning workspace, that carries a weightage of around 30 to 35%. This is the maximum weightage in the exam. Then the second topic you should be knowing is run the experiments and train models. That's roughly around 25 to 30% in exam. And that includes creating a machine learning models using Azure ML Designer 
Also, you should be creating, running, and managing experiments using machine learning SDK on Azure. So you should be familiar with both designer as well as machine learning SDK. You should also be knowing how to generate metrics, retrieve experiments, outputs, and troubleshoot those machine learning runs or experiments that you are running. Once you have run or trained the model, you should be knowing how to optimize and manage these models or machine learning models. And that's around 20 to 25%. And that includes things like using automated machine learning models via machine learning studio or SDK. You should be also tuning the hyperparameters using hyperdrive and you should be able to um, register and monitor models for any uh, data drift. And the fourth and final topic is which is weightage 20 to 25%, which is about deploying and consuming these uh, models. So once you have generated those models, you keep those models into a model registry and then create something called image repository so that these models can be run on Docker containers or Kubernetes engine or virtual machines. And from these registries or images, you deploy your machine learning model onto either cluster, Kubernetes cluster, virtual machine, or a different type of workloads. You should also know how to deploy a pipeline as a web service and so that you get an endpoint and that endpoint can be used by clients. So this is overall all the four topics on a high level you should be knowing. And the final one is who this certification is for. So this certification is applicable for anyone who would like to work on machine learning and AI or already working and would like to become a data scientist. It's targeted for professionals or individuals who are good in mathematics or statistics. Also, if you're working on any type of uh, data covering training the models or evaluating the competing models or different type of models and you do these on your task um, or would like to do then implement those on Microsoft Azure. Then appearing for this Azure Data Scientist certification and getting this certification can help you in not only learning these concepts but also getting a higher paid job. So now once you have learned all the four topics that I mentioned um, just now then you write one exam. That exam is design and implement a data science solution on Azure. And once you clear this exam, you get this Microsoft certified Azure data scientist certification badge. Now it's important you do some hands-on lab and that's how you learn and remember things. So apart from understanding concepts, you should be doing these labs and what these labs are and or around 20 labs that we cover in, a, in our training program. So just to give you some background, we have a step-by-step -step comprehensive training program on how to design and implement a data science solution on Microsoft Azure, which is targeted for DP100 certification. So we prepare you for this certification where we bring Microsoft certified trainers to teach and train. And in this program, we cover 20 hands-on lab and we also cover some sample questions so you can see what to expect in the exam. And the most important thing is one year on job support once you get a job after doing the certification. So what these labs are that you should be performing and how you can get hold of a free 90 minute class. If you're preparing for this certification, I'll tell you in a minute. But first let's look at these hands-on lab. So these 20 labs, first and important thing as we were discussing earlier, you should be creating a a machine learning workspace. Once you are have created a machine learning workspace that you can do by going to Microsoft Azure Cloud, then you should be making yourself familiar with all the tools that comes are available as a part of machine learning. You should be familiar with all these tools. Then you should create and train a ML pipeline using machine learning designer on Azure. You run different type of algorithms or machine learning models, then train and register these models and then work with different type of data sets and data stores. That data store can be coming from a SQL database, it could be coming from a storage account, or it could be coming from a data lake or some external source. Or you bring your own data set and import it into the Microsoft Azure workspace. Then you should be knowing different type of compute targets on which you can run these models. That includes virtual machine or virtual machine clusters or Docker containers or Azure container instances or Kubernetes cluster on Microsoft Azure. You should also be familiar with creating and publishing pipelines, which is these machine learning pipelines. Also creating batch and real-time inferencing services. There are some performance related 
configurations also. So how do you tune these hyperparameters? And then some labs around how do you monitor these models using application insights. There's another service on Microsoft Azure. And then finally, make sure you are familiar with data drift and how do you manage or monitor these data drifts. So you can check further information on these 20 labs by going to ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP1005. Now this is some of the screenshots from uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud and you can go on to the Microsoft Azure Cloud and start working on from this flow where you go and search for a machine learning workspace and you can go and create these machine learning workspaces. Then these are different tools that are available on inside the machine learning workspace. Here's an example of a machine learning designer, which is a graphical user interface to run these models or machine learning algorithms. So have a look at by going to ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP1005 for a list of all the labs that you should be doing so that you learn and understand these data science concepts very well and prepare yourself for exam. So once you have done or worked on a hands-on lab and understood the theory or basic concepts, one final thing before you appear for the exam is to practice some questions. Now you should be able to find out these sample exam questions over the internet, or I think um, you should be able to buy some of these exam questions. Now, if you're part of our training program that I mentioned earlier, we also provide you the sample questions, I think of 50 or 60 plus sample questions on as a part of the program where you can see what kind of a questions to expect in the exam. Also that way you can also go back to the concepts and see you, whether you have understood these concepts well or not. So make sure you go through some sample questions to see what to expect in the exam. Now in the free class I that mentioned earlier, that we do for those who are preparing for the certification uh, DP100. I get a lot of questions. So I picked up some of them related to the certification. So the question is, first of all, what are the prerequisites for this DP100? So as I said, you should have a familiarity with mathematical knowledge. And there you don't need a very advanced mathematics. The basic mathematics that you've studied in school is enough. And then second, knowledge of Python. Then another question I get is, hey, I'm a fresher. Can I learn it? Absolutely. Make yourself familiar, as I said, with the prerequisite Python language and also some basic mathematics language. It's totally doable. And if you're interested in AI machine learning, then that's a great skill and great certification to pick it. Another one is any programming language. So then, as I said, the machine learning algorithms on Microsoft Azure are done or coded using Python. So you should have some knowledge about Python and same is about coding. So Python is for you to good to know about Python. Now, as I said, I have this step-by-step -step comprehensive training program where we go deep into all the topics which I mentioned earlier with 10 modules, 20 plus labs, exam preparation, and the most important on-job support. It's a live interactive program where you can go and ask questions from, from the trainer and you also have access to WhatsApp community. So this is a comprehensive 10 module step-by-step -step training program, which is a live interactive sessions with 20 plus labs, exam preparation, sample questions, and the most important one year on job support. You will also be part of a WhatsApp group where you will meet other individuals like you who have already cleared the certification or who are appearing for the certification. So if you're interested and would like to know more about it, I would love to you to join a free masterclass, which is roughly around 60 to 90 minute free class where we discuss about why to learn Azure Cloud and the market trends for machine learning. The roadmap for DP100, which some of the topics I've already covered, where we look at these four exam topics that we discussed just now. So you all to register for this free class is ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP100.02. Now, next week, I'm going to pick up one of the basic things that you should be knowing, that's machine learning workflow. So I'm going to pick up a clip from our day one of the training, where we talk about what you need to do on a high level, right from creating a data store or data set, deploying your machine learning models and training them on either virtual machine or Docker containers or Kubernetes cluster, once you're happy with those models, then you copy them into model registry, which is nothing but all your different models are stored there. So you can pick them or modify them later, or you can create a registry out of this. And these registries are your container registry. 
so that you can run these models, these images with its all its dependencies. If you're writing in Python, you have Python and all its required libraries. Or if you're writing on R, it's R and it's all libraries. Put that together into an image. That image can be deployed independently on a standalone container like a Docker container, or you can deploy them into Azure Container Instance, ACI, Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS, or any other Kubernetes engine or a unmanaged Kubernetes engine or in your on-premise Kubernetes engine. And from this deployment, you get a endpoint that can be used by clients, your apps, web apps, mobile apps, and so on. So a clip talking about machine learning workflow end-to-end -end flow that you should be doing or understanding in order to become a good data scientist and clear the certification DP100. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe to this on our YouTube channel or by going to this URL, ketoneacademy.com forward slash DP1011 and on the right hand side, join over 100,000 individuals like you who have subscribed to our blog updates. So enter your name and email address and click on subscribe so that you get notified when we release this new video. Now with that, this is Atul from Team Ketone Academy covering everything you should know for Microsoft Azure Data Scientist Associate Certification DP100. Now, if you have any question that I have not answered and you want me to cover, then either leave it as a comment wherever you are watching this. If you are watching on our blog, leave a comment on blog or if you're watching on YouTube or any other social channel, just leave a comment there and my team will connect with me and I'll be happy to answer any question you have. So now go and look at ketoneacademy.com forward slash dp1011 and I'll see you next week with the machine learning workflow video. Till then, take care.